Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find these comic books, all sorts of stuff, what I get in my mailbox. I talk about quite a bit of stuff. So, let's start with a comic book I read recently. This is part two of two of Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. Or is it supposed to be Lovecraft P.I.? meets Miss Katonic High. Either way, these two different uh, comic books meet. It was a very fun read. I loved it. And uh, it actually, as you may know, I am a big fan of Miss Katonic High. And they introduced me to Lovecraft P.I., which uh, is now a comic book I also love. So it's really cool stuff. Oh, and look, there's an ad right here on the back for Berserker's Solo Island, which is by the same creator as Lovecraft P.I. So, let's start with some credits here. Let's see, are the credits written here? Oh, there we go. There's some credits. So, this is written by D.W. Kahn and Mike Shea. Art by Daniel Segulia. Colorist, Damien Penalba. Lettered by Joel Saavedra. Saavedra. And script assisted by Francisco Tomat. So this, as I said, this is um, part two of Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High. And, oh yeah, check out that. That's an awesome little scene right there. Kind of makes me think of Abbey Road. And that's uh, Detective Lovecraft right there walking with the kids from Miskatonic High. And uh, so, anyway, this story is about uh, some time travel. They end up in 1932 by cutting themselves with a spe special sword, a Kronos sword, I think. And uh, so what they do is they cut themselves with this Kronos sword and uh, they say where they want to be and what time. So they say Washington, D.C., 1932, and poof. So they're in olden times and they end up going to a tailor shop and uh, Lovecraft helps them blend in with the uh, current timeline and community sorts of fun stuff like that, but they're chasing after a monster. So in their own time, they were chasing this monster, and uh, when this monster reaches the atmosphere or space, it evolves into a, and it multiplies, I think, uh, gremlin style or something when it gets wet. Anyway, so in their own time, in our time, insane amount of monsters uh, rain down on their Miskatonic town, and uh, it, all chaos breaks loose, so they figure the only way we can fix this is going back in time. So, and that's what this story is, is they go back in time to our time and, tr and try and fix it. They get the help of, uh, of the army and whatnot. So we get all sorts of fun little antics where they join, they go and uh, fight these monsters on the lawn at, of DC, like over in the uh, museum area. What, I don't, I've never been to DC so I only know from movies that there is a big area full of museums. Monument Square? I don't know what it's called. Anyway, Washington DC. Not my forte. But yeah, lots of fun stuff. They defeat the monster and everybody goes home. For even a split second there are two uh, Agent Lovecrafts there and all that. So it, it was really cool. I, I kind of like that aspect of it. Really fun stuff. A lot of fun stuff. And uh, yeah, even my... Uh, so I backed this on Kickstarter. And yes, that's the thank you page. That is a lot of people right there on the thank you page. And I am listed as Harlock and Gary of Rent and Arb Studios Comics. Uh, that is because normally I just back as myself. But on these Miskatonic highs, I've got a friend hooked on them. And uh, so every time I back these comics... I get two copies and uh, I keep one for myself and give one to him. It's a good situation. Fun stuff. There's a few comic books where uh, I've backed it as with me and my friend Harlock. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So he's probably already read it by now, but it took me a while to read it. It was in my read pile. So that's Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. Part 2 of 2. And uh, pretty soon I should be getting the uh, a trade volume in the mail where it has a couple extra pages, 20, I think, 20 or so extra pages of that. So 
that'll be awesome. I'll let you know what I think of that when I read that one. And, oh yeah, might as well show you all these awesome posters that came with it. Oh yeah, so there's the monster that they were fighting. I'll have to find some room on the wall for that. Look at that, back it up because it's so big. Yeah, look at that, that is awesome. So that is Shubby, that's what the uh, kids nicknamed this monster that they're fighting. And there's a print right there, check that one out. Here's a print with Shubby in the background. And they're in an old 30s style car. Here's a scene from the tailor shop. And here's another scene when they're trying to get the army to help them out. And some of the chaos there. So that's pretty cool that they turned a few of those into prints. And as you know, I have a wall right here. It's chock full of uh, prints and stuff from the Kickstarters and all that. All right, so that brings me on to my next book that I read. The next book I read uh, is called Stand Still. This one, let's see, I ended up with uh, copies one and two, and I already have uh, one and two of Stand Still, so I will probably be doing a contest and giving those away because uh, I don't really need extra copies of it, but this review is of issue three and four that uh, I backed, and uh, really cool stuff. I, this story is amazing. I would love to see this up on the screen. It's crazy stuff. It's pandemic-ish in that, um, ooh, I've got to be careful what pages I turn to to keep this clean for kids. So, standstill three and four here are about there's a pandemic that hits uh, and billions and billions of the uh, world's population suddenly stop moving. Um, they either stand still or they're, if they're already sitting, they stay lit sitting or laying or whatever. Either way, whatever they're doing currently, they just stop moving. And uh, it's bad news for a lot of people if you're swimming and you suddenly stand still. That's not good. Or if you're flying a plane, there's a lot of chaos going on. Okay, I can't show you that page. But yeah, there's some cool stuff. These are uh, black, white, and black and white, grayscale kind of awesome artwork. Um, it works for it. It works for the story. And there's currently a Kickstarter going on right now for issues, I think, uh, seven and eight. And I will talk more about that when I get to the Kickstarter part. But this book, this book is about... Um, the main character of the story is trying to get his girlfriend across the... Well, there's not a lot of safe pages I can turn to on this one. Because it is adult themed and... Well, can't turn to that page for you. It is adult themed and uh, so that entails a couple things that adults do that kids shouldn't see. So that's why I'm not showing you right now. So let me get on to the credits part of this page. Oh yeah, look at that too. I even got an autograph right there from uh, from Justin Gray. That's who's doing this one. So awesome autograph on that. So the credits on Standstill here are created by Justin Gray and Jimmy Braxton. Written by Justin Gray. Pages 1 through 18 are illustrated by Aman Amanse Nahol. Oh, wow. Now, Huel Penn, and pages 19 through 24 are illustrated by Branko Jojovic Jovanovic, sorry, Branko Jovanovic, and lettered and designed by Benny Lava. And that's issues threes. Issue fours credits, let's check out that, are created by Justin Gray and Jimmy Braxton. Written by Justin Justin Gray, and illustrated by Bronco Jovanovic, and lettered by Benny Lava. So uh, that's pretty cool too. So this one uh, even features. Uh, so there's this girl, and she's uh, she's taking advantage of uh, 
a hotel pool that is vacant and see there's a guy at the bottom of the pool from uh, he was must have been swimming when the standstill happened and so she's sitting there she's taking advantage of the pool swimming enjoying stuff listening to music drinking uh, their liquors and stuff and she's looking over there's families everywhere uh, that just suddenly stop moving uh, husbands and wives and their kids and all that so she's yeah and she's noticing too that they're their stomachs are growling from because they've been standing still so long they haven't been eaten and it's it's freaking her out she's talking about it to herself a lot and uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere all the standstill people start uh, walking and uh, she doesn't know where they're going so she gets in a truck and she's following behind them listening to music all the way just to you know entertain herself not go crazy but yeah, so this suddenly turns from Standstill to uh, another comic that, very similar to another comic I'm already back into called By the Time I Get to Dallas, where it's about a bunch of people that walk to a specific place in the world, and uh, they don't know why, nobody knows why they're moving there, but, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting to find out where this story is going, and, uh, and there's also uh, some people on a submarine, which, we don't know if uh, if they open the hatch, is the air going to make them stand still? We don't know because they've been in a uh, a chamber. The, you know, submarines are kind of their own atmosphere, and uh, yeah, who knows what will happen when they open that hatch? But they've been communicating with the main guy from the first comic issue, and so yeah, really cool stuff. I'm loving what's going on with this story. It's some crazy stuff. There, are, I mean. Uh, the handful of people that can move, who knows if they're good or bad. Well, there's one that I'm for sure I know is bad. And then there's the guy that's trying to get his girlfriend figured out, safe and figured out. Wow, what a story. But, yeah, it's uh, I think the story's wrapping up on Kickstarter right now. He did a really short run on the Kickstarter, a 14-day Kickstarter. So, hopefully I get this video out in time to uh, let you guys know about it. Oh, check that out. There's a... Uh, very shiny chromium print that came with this one too so yeah i will have to do a comp contest and give away issues one and two so that i don't have duplicates in my uh collection and yeah i'll do that pretty soon um maybe at the end of this video on my twitter i'll put i'll put the contest on there and uh mail those out to somebody so if you like what you're, if you like the idea of this uh, standstill and you're old enough to read it, because it, like I said, it is a mature reader and uh, all that fun stuff. So uh, comment under this video that you want it, either on the Twitters, the Facebook, or the uh, you, uh, YouTube. You could comment on YouTube also. So wherever you comment, I will create a list, throw them in a bucket, and draw one of you guys out and send you standstill one and two. How about that? And I'll even send you a signed copy of Peter Pan the Vampire 1. So, uh, yeah. Um, next brings next up on my list is Rent Narves Mailbox. Rent Narves Mailbox, what did I get in my mail today? So, recently in my mailbox, I got a comic called Don't Let Your Loved Ones Die. I don't even remember what the story is, but... Apparently, it was cool enough that I wanted to back it. Wow, this is a thick book, too. A lot of pages in this boy. So I can't wait to uh, check that one out. Let's see. Oh, there's a thank you page. Am I on it? No, no, I don't see my name on the thank you. Oh, yes. My name is on the thank you page. Wait, let's see. Right there. Right there. Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. So that's pretty cool. So, yes. Don't let your loved ones die going into my read pile. Right now my read pile is an entire long box full of books so I'm getting I'm trying to catch up but it's it's a hard struggle to catch up and and also in my mailbox I got these. These are uh, blue leads and I use blue lead when I draw my comic books so these are going to come in handy. What you, the reason you draw on blue lead is when you scan it the blue is not supposed to uh, photocopy, so if I draw it really sloppy in blue lead and then ink it, it it creates less ink, less erasing, 
and keeps my Sharpie lines and all that fun stuff uh, solid enough that uh, when I scan it, it, everything looks good. Either way, uh, yeah, if you're making comics, I recommend checking out Blue Leads, see what they can do for you, and all that fun stuff. Now we're on to the campaign corner. Better get out of that corner. So campaign corner is the part where I talk about comic books that you should know about that are on Kickstarter right now. And uh, so I'm going to start with uh, talking about my own book. I know it's a little, uh, it's a little uh, self-promoted, I guess, but hey, where else am I going to talk about my own books but my own show? So Peter Pan the Vampire comics are on IndiePlanet.com. And I write and draw the whole thing. I color everything. I'm the entire team on uh, Peter Pan the Vampire comics. And, uh, yeah, I have issues 1, 2, and 3 on there uh, pretty soon. I should have 4 coming up. Or, actually, before 4, I want to release one called The Mermaids of Neverland that my daughter is drawing. Just for giggles here, I'm going to show you some of that. So check this out. This is a page from Mermaids of Neverland. My daughter is drawing it. And uh, oh, here's another page. Check that cool stuff out. So I got two pages here of Mermaids of Neverland. I've got quite a bit of pages, but as soon as I, as soon as she finishes that comic book, uh, I will be throwing that up on the uh, Kickstarter, just running a campaign for it. And uh, yeah, I'm paying her pretty good for it. And if the Kickstarter goes really well, she'll get a bonus on it. So be on the lookout for that. But Peter Pan the Vampire comics are on Indie Planet. You can pay the, uh, they're under $4 a copy, and uh, so get $4 for the physical copy, or they're actually free if you download them to your phone. Uh, downloading, getting the free copy, even if you already have the uh, physical copy, it helps me out. It keep, keeps me in the algorithm and uh, lets people know you like my comics, all that fun stuff. So check out Peter Pan the Vampire on Indie Planet. Dot com and uh, Indie Planet is an awesome place. That's where I print my comics through Indie Planet's Kablam Printing, and they are awesome people. As you recently remember uh, in my last video, I did a box opening of my latest shipment of Peter Pan the Vampire comics, which are right here. Uh, these are what my, I call my mini comics. I print three on the side and then cut them into mini comics. Uh, maybe I'll send you one of those with standstill if you win. So, um, yeah. So I had a flub where, as I was showing you the comics I got, uh, I noticed they gave me black and white issue number threes instead of my color issue number threes. Well, they, they've they already fixed that. It's already cool. Um, so I already have my uh, the reshipment of it, issue threes color coming my way. They're already fixing it. It's awesome. I love Kablam. Thank you for uh, fixing that so fast, Kablam. And YouTube comments. Nobody's commented lately on my videos, so can't read those. All right, now to the Kickstarters. Duplicant 1 through 5 is on Kickstarter. Wait, actually, right before I started recording, I noticed that that uh, had come out of my account. So Duplicant 1 through 5 is over. Grim Space is on Kickstarter right now. A sci-fi reimagining of classic fairy tales. So Grim Face is um, it's about Jack and the Beanstalk. Basically, um... Jack is a pilot captain, and he uh, he runs the ship, the Beanstalk, and so this is all uh, fairy tales in space, kind of cool stuff. And he has a android that goes default, defunctive, defective, and uh, its name is P1 Nokio. So obviously you know where that one's coming from. And uh, he trades in P1 Nokio for a a mysterious navigation unit, and. Uh, so basically, it's the Jack and the Beanstalk story. Who knows what's going on? Lost in space kind of st cool stuff. It is a 28-page comic book. I'm happy to be a backer of this one. I can't wait to get it. And it is from the same people who brought you the uh, Tales from Neverland story. So that's cool. Um, I, w I was really happy with their version of the Peter Pans, all the different versions. And so Grim Space 1 is on Kickstarter right now till November 19th. The complete Kickstarter playbook is on Kickstarter right now from Will Terry. Will Terry made the um, What They Don't Teach You in Art School. And uh, I, that was a pretty cool, it's a textbook style book of basically just 
tips of how to get your art noticed and stuff into galleries. So I'm imagining the complete playbook of Kickstarter here, the complete Kickstarter playbook, is along the same lines. It's going to be a textbook, and uh, hopefully it gives me some ideas on how I should run my Kickstarter when uh, the time comes to run Mermaids of Neverland and Peter Pan the Vampire 4, all that fun stuff. So check out the complete Kickstarter playbook on Kickstarter till November 22nd. Oh, here we go. Justin Gray's Standstill 7 and 8 are on Kickstarter right now. That's the book that I just reviewed and the book that you can win by commenting that you want to enter into the contest. Even if you just comment like, hey, your show's dumb, you're still in the contest. So, whatever. Uh, so check out Justin Gray's Standstill 7 and 8 on Kickstarter right now. You can get issues 1 through 8 in the Kickstarter as well. I recommend that. Uh, huge, huge fan of the storyline. And uh, so... The byline here, the, the survivor, survival horror comic standstill with two new completed issues, the story of a post-apocalyptic event where billions of people are paralyzed. This is a 14-day campaign, and I think it actually ends in seven days, so check out Standstill on Kickstarter right now till November 23rd. Wasatch Wonders is coming back with the second issue. It is a 24-page comic book continuing the adventures of Utah's greatest superhero team, the Wasatch Wonders. And uh, this is from a buddy of mine, Evan, who uh, is kind of a neighbor. He lives over in Logan, where that's where I drive every single week to go do my plasma appointments. And, uh, and that's where I read my comics, is that plasma. Anyway, so Evan, he's a local guy from Utah here, right? Pretty much neighbors. And... Uh, He's a teacher, making comics in his spare time. Really cool stuff. I can't wait to uh, see what he does in the next installment of Wasatch Wonders, number two. Check it out. Um, so, Wasatch Wonders, issue two, is on Kickstarter till November 23rd. Get in on that one. Miskatonic High, awesome. That's uh, where you could actually, the re comics are reviewed. Um, Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft P.I. Well, you could get that comic, Lovecraft P.I. and meets Miskatonic High, on this Kickstarter. So check out Miskatonic High 13. Wow, 13 issues. So, so high up there. So many good stuff to read. The time twisting end to Season 2, when Alex and Simon confront the Warlock, it's a race against time to save them. But for some of their friends... It's already too late. 27 pages of awesomeness. Uh, the behind the scenes teacher's lounge part in the back of the books are always my favorite part too. I love uh, their little anecdotes and insight into how they make the comics and uh, their back and forth on how they come up with characters. Really cool stuff. Miskatonic High 13 on Kickstarter right now till November 25th. And you can get Lovecraft PI. You can, you can probably get a whole bunch of other stuff on there as well. I don't know if the uh, Berserker Solo Island or whatever the other Lovecraft PI books are on there, but check that out. Really good stuff. One of my, my favorite book to back, too. Um, Hollowed, one through four is on Kickstarter right now. I recently reviewed Hollowed um, three. So, continuing adventures of Detective Tyler and Vasquez as they hunt down a serial killer in Buffalo, New York, who is known as... The person who hollows people out, that's why it's called Hollowed. And this accompanies with a uh, soundtrack that you can... Music that it goes along with the comic books. I'm, I don't really do that, but I'm just in it for the uh, awesome story. So I'm back in Hollowed 1 through 4 right now on Kickstarter until November 30th. Check it out. The art is crazy awesome, bombastic. It looks like graffiti-ish. And uh, I love the way it's going huge twist in the end of issue three so i can't wait to see what's going on on issue four here's a new one i'm talking about second shift issues one through twelve are on kickstarter right now a tale of minimum wage workers during the day and heroes at night a team faces off against a man terrorizing san diego with wild animals so i've been listening to some new podcasts uh a podcast called making comics and one of the uh, speakers on this show is the creator of Second Shift here. So I'm, I'm interested in it. thought it'd be cool to check out. And uh, yeah, 
Check out Second Shift, issues 1 through 12 on Kickstarter right now until December 1st. Leap M is on Kickstarter right now. Leap M is awesome looking uh, black and white art. It makes me think of, so I'm a big fan of uh, John Romita Jr. And it's semi in the style of John Romita Jr. And, uh, oh man, why can't I, so I'm blanking on the other names. Anyway, uh, it looks like Frank Miller-ish kind of art. John Romita Jr. art, uh, and that's some pretty good high, that's some pretty good praise. So check out Leap M on Kickstarter. It is 28 pages of awesomeness. A dishonorably discharged discharged veteran has a life sentence given to him because uh, oh man, I'm flubbing this up. Anyway, I should just read the paper. A dishonorably discharged veteran has his life stolen from him. Now he seeks the one who took what he never wanted. Leap M, or L the Leap Machine, is the government's answer to overcrowded prisons. And rather than sentence someone to 30 years, they take 30 years of their life away from them and age them through this Leap M machine. And the art is gritty, scratchy, love, love the previews that you can see on the uh, Kickstarter page. And check out Leap M on Kickstarter till December 1st. Planer Jane, one through uh, five, one through five is on Kickstarter right now. 26 pages of comic book and issues four and five of Planer Jane. The story is of a seemingly ordinary teen girl who becomes a brutally efficient killer for hire. So uh, Jane goes to a job fair and she does, none of the jobs are jumping out at her and uh, Oddly enough, somehow uh, she ends up uh, working as a nurse with her friend, and but then she also ends up working through text messages as a killer for hire. And so that's a cool story. Really Dexter-ish if Dexter was a teenage girl going to school. So check out Planer Jane 1 through 5. That's a lot of issues you can get on Kickstarter right now till December 2nd. Smitten. Oh, Smitten, comma, life. Sorry. Read the whole thing. The a new graphic novel. Smitten is a huge. It, Smitten is a house cat. Good handwriting there. Smitten is a house cat who happens to be a powerful were human. So he's a house cat that turns into a boy sometimes. And it's an epic new series featuring the most unlikely of superheroes. It is a hundred and twelve pages of black and white art. These the artwork looks insanely awesome. So check out uh, Smitten Life. One, the graphic novel on Kickstarter right now till December 2nd. In the Land of the Dragon, cyberpunk fantasy comic, is on Kickstarter right now. The kidnapping of a child with unknown powers sparks a war between two warring corporations in a world of magic and technology. This 32 page comic book on Kickstarter until December 3rd. A Trick of the Light. Uh, wow, yeah, when I came across this one on Twitter, uh, I was inst instantly grabbed and jumped on there to back it. So check out A Trick of the Light, a story inspired by British girls' as comics of the 60s and 70s, romance comics. And it's a 40-page black and white with some color elements. Um, it's not even black and white, really. It's penciled, uninked, raw looking artwork. I love it. It's very sketchy looking. John Romita Sr. looking artwork. Work. And uh, it's a, it's 1970. Ruth and Cynthia are two teachers that work at a country school somewhere in the UK. Ruth is driving them both to work one day and she starts to develop a migraine. And reality starts to shift, making her doubt her perception. So what is the dark secret of the Standing Stones? I don't know, but I love Standing Stones stories, uh, Outlander, time travel, kind of cool stuff. And the artwork on this comic looks awesome, even if it just turns out to be an awesome romance comic. I'm game for that too. Uh, I love romance books. So check out A Trick of the Light on Kickstarter till December 3rd. Minx Cyberpunk 3 is now on Kickstarter. Um, I'm still waiting for issue 2 to show up in the mail, but... I have enough faith in these people to deliver that uh, I'm already back in it. So hopefully I get it in time to read it and let you know what the story's like. Uh, issue one was really awesome. 
Uh, it's this bounty hunter running around through space, and uh, she gets framed for a crime, and the it's making me wonder, like, the person they filmed doing the crime, was it a clone? Was it someone who can change shapeshift into her? Who knows? Yeah, I hope it's the clone thing, because I love clone stories. So, check out Minx Cyberpunk number 3 on Kickstarter right now. Uh, the, it's called The Wait Is Over. A second install, a third installment of Minx is a high-octane adventure with intense sci-fi action, badass characters, and explosive battles. So, hopefully this is a clone story. It's awesome. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, it's written by Pat's, Pat Shand, who uh, writes the Destiny New York series that I really love. I mean, if you uh, look at my Kickstarter box here, there is a huge chunk of Pat Shand comics in there. Um, yeah, Destiny New York, and all the Destiny, like, uh, Kick-Ass Barista, and uh, your Badass Barista, sorry. That would be a different comic book. And uh, Little Girl, there's a lot There's a lot of good Pat Shand stuff in there, so that's one of the big reasons I'm back in this, is because I don't doubt uh, Pat Shand. It'll get delivered eventually, and when I read it, I can talk about the Kickstarter some more. Fun stuff. Minx Cyberpunk is on Kickstarter until December 8th. Happy Pines is on Kickstarter right now. It is a 35-page mystery thriller set in the forests of Nova Scotia. And it, Happy Pines is on Kickstarter till December 9th. Dig Two Graves, it, the graphic novel, is on Indiegogo. After a brutal murder of her family, Miranda Stone is left with a desire for revenge. 80 pages plus 4 bonus material pages. It is for mature readers. Um, so Dig Two Graves, obviously the saying goes, is if you want revenge, Dig Two Graves. So... Check out Dig Two Graves right now on Indiegogo. Sex Spies and Rock and Roll is an anthology comic book, a retro spy caper anthology book with multiple stories, Cold War espionage meets rock and roll. 96 pages of awesomeness. Stories follow a group of spies in the ISF, International, Foundation, International Security Foundation. So check out Sex Spies and Rock and Roll on Indiegogo. I backed it on Kickstarter, so I should be getting the book soon. Hopefully I get it in time to review it for you guys, let you know what you're gonna be backing. If you go to Indiegogo.com right now and check out Sex Spies and Rock and Roll, the anthology. Zader the Savage is coming to Kickstarter soon. This is by the same person that made uh, Lovecraft P.I. and Berserker Solo Island. So check out Zader the Savage. Zader the Savage brings vengeance to those who aim to destroy his life. It's coming soon. It's not quite on Kickstarter yet. But as soon as it is, uh, I'm going to check it out, back it, and all that fun stuff. It looks like a Conan the Barbarian kind of sto star story. Uh, Red Sonja kind of cool stuff. So that'd be really cool. Can't wait to see that. So, um, yeah, as you know, uh, I like to talk about Kickstarter comics and Indiegogo comics. So if you have a campaign running for one, let me know about it. Or even if it's free on Indie Planet, let me know about it and I'll check it out and read your comic and uh, tell other people what I thought about it. So if you have anything running right now, Tell me about it and I'll check it out. Or if, even if it's on Webtoons. Um, there's a really cool one I've been reading lately on Webtoons called... Uh, oh man. It's called Atmanin from uh, Toss a Coin to Your Monster. And uh, it's a really awesome story. I'm loving that. As soon as that one ever hits print, I'm going to pick that one up. So if you're watching this right now, uh, maybe you should consider doing a Kickstarter for that and letting people get it in print. But it is awesome to read on the, uh, on the uh, webtoons. And I think it's on the Patreon as well. So check that one out. Oh yeah, and I've been reading one uh, digitally called The Familiar. That one's an awesome one as well. And uh, it's probably one I'd, back it, I'd buy if it's ever available in print. Speaking of one that's available in print, um, Plunder World is now available in print. So check that one out. You can get a print copy of Plunder World. That one's from uh, Linda Sedgick. So that's the end of that. Um, 
Things I've been watching lately is uh, Doogie Hauser on the uh, Disney Plus. It's a new one set in Hawaii. I'm loving it. Uh, the Hawaii aspect of it is really cool because I lived there for a really short time of my life. And uh, I've been enamored with Hawaiian culture ever since. So it's really cute, really cool show, one I can watch with my wife and uh, stuff like that. And I've been watching Lock and Key Season 2 with my teenagers. Man, that one, that story is crazy. It's awesome, all those keys and that weird powers and stuff the keys do. Fun stuff, fun story. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to start Hawkeye next week. That's pretty cool stuff. And that's some other stuff. So, right now I'm going to talk about my Patreon page. Um, if you would like to back me on Patreon, check me out. Uh, I finally started doing something with it, but I still currently have no backers, so I'm just going to show you the example here. If you back me on Kickstarter, I will hold up a card that has your name on it and your socials, and I will say, thank you for backing me, Gary Brantner, and you can follow Gary Brantner on these social medias. But until then, I'm just going to keep using my own self as an example, and if you want to follow me on any of these socials, check me out. I post links to every Kickstarter that I mentioned in the video on my Twitter. So check out Rentnarb on Twitter. And uh, you will see all the links to every Kickstarter I have mentioned in this video. So thank you for watching. And that's the end of my show. Rentnarb Studios. Turning off the camera now. Oh man. <laughs>